Hey, are you experiencing pain when you play the drums? Or perhaps you're struggling with some kind of drumming related injury? I've personally struggled with these issues before, but I've successfully managed to get over them. And so I'd like to share with you what I learned. And so hopefully it can help you as well. So back when I was in university, um, just as I was graduating, I came down with a bad case of, of uh, drummer tendonitis or repetitive stress injury. And it was a really difficult time because um, every time I played drums, I would feel pain. Um, and every time I played, it was really hard to get into a groove or really get into it because there was always this feeling that something just wasn't right. So I really contemplated quitting at the time but I just loved drumming so much, it was so fundamental to my life that I decided that I really needed to get over this and find a way to cure this problem. So I consulted a whole slew of different health professionals including uh, I took physiotherapy, osteopathy, acupressure, kinesiotherapy, and while all these treatments helped, they didn't really cure the problem, they only kind of mitigated it. It wasn't until I met a particularly wise person named Jean who really helped me understand how these injuries develop. So what I learned is that drumming injuries take a long time to develop. They happen over a series of months, years. After practicing and playing with too much tension, eventually your body just kind of gives out and that's when you experience an injury. But it doesn't happen overnight. Also what I learned was that in order to heal this problem, what you need to do is relearn to play the drums but in a way that isn't damaging to your body. And then slowly after developing this new approach, you can kind of build up your endurance again and get back to a place where you can play even better than you did before because uh, of these new skills. So after figuring this out, I really took learning technique seriously. I studied a whole bunch of different approaches, found different teachers but it was really the molar technique that helped me get through my injuries and get back playing again. So you might have heard of the molar technique and a lot of people think that uh, learning the molar technique is learning the three note molar and playing fast accented single stroke rolls. And while those are the results of learning the molar technique, in order to get there and to heal your injuries, you, le you need to learn your fundamentals. And so the fundamentals are kind of like the building blocks and uh, the thing that allow you to get to a place where you can really use the molar technique. And the fundamentals are learned through a series of repetitive, slow exercises, and they really teach you uh, the basic building blocks of learning the molar technique. So for example, developing fulcrum. So there's an exercise uh, that you can do to develop your fulcrum. There's also another exercise to really uh, take advantage of rebound. And so through learning these fundamentals, you can get to playing the molar technique. So what I want to do today is walk you through one of these exercises, uh, just so you can experience it for yourself. So this exercise um, helps you develop fulcrum. So basically what, what I want you to do is take your drumstick. If you have a pair of Vic Frith sticks, you can find the flag. And this is basically the balance point. So this is where we want to create a fulcrum. So a fulcrum is basically just a pivot. It's where the stick is going to move from and it's going to make the movement a lot easier so you don't have to force. Uh, and basically that's what causes injuries when you squeeze the sticks too much and you know play like that over and over, eventually you can develop these injuries. So in order to heal yourself, you want to, you want to take advantage of fulcrum. So this exercise you're going to put your middle finger right where the flag is on your big first stick and you're going to press your three other fingers against the stick and the butt of the stick will align just outside the center of your of your hand so you're going to turn your hand over and you're going to squeeze the stick inside your hand your thumb and index are going to be separated so for now just for this exercise they're not going to be connected to the stick you can let the stick rest 
on the pad or the snare drum if you don't have a pad and it's just kind of touching the back of my hand and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly squeeze the stick in and gently pull my wrist up and so now the stick is at about a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to let the stick dribble out over my middle finger fulcrum. I'm going to repeat this over and over bring it up about 45 degrees and let it dribble out. You can notice that I'm sitting up nice and straight and so this uh, if my lumbar is up then it makes my whole back straight and my, sh my shoulders and my arms can hang by my side. That's really important. That's what creates the looseness. Another thing that's really important is when the stick strikes the pad all three fingers are touching the stick but then as soon as it starts to, to bounce then it primarily rests on my middle finger on that fulcrum and just tune in to the feeling inside your body for me I feel kind of like a relaxation that goes all the way up my arm all the way into my neck and this is the process you slowly loosen up those muscles and relearn how to approach the drum in a way that's not damaging. And this actually feels really good, especially if you have an injury. This is really going to loosen things up. The next step would be to pull the stick all the way up to 90, almost 90 degrees, and then let it pivot out, let it bounce out like that. If your stick is really well balanced, it's going to bounce slowly. So it doesn't, it's not rushed. If your stick is, is not really bouncing well, it means you're not quite on the balance point of the stick and you need to readjust. Either bring your hand up or bring your hand down on the stick until it's, it's really just doing that really slowly and it's really well balanced over that middle finger. And then you're going to do that in both hands. So you can repeat that exercise in both hands and just notice how it feels. So this is really the process, slowly, slowly you relearn through your fundamentals uh, to approach the drum in a way that works with your body and not against it. And progressively, you'll be able to play again and you'll, if you keep this up, you'll, you'll actually get to a, a level that was even better than before because before you're, you're forcing, you're using too much tension and it actually doesn't create great drumming. Great drumming happens in a relaxed way. So if you're interested in learning more about this process, uh, you can sign up to my online class. The link will be in the description box. It includes 30 videos that walk you through all the fundamentals and then get you into playing the molar technique. I also offer online lessons uh, through Skype or Zoom or FaceTime. If you'd like some coaching and some help, I'd be happy to help you out. I'm really passionate about this subject. So uh, best of luck. I hope you enjoyed this video and see the links in the description box. Have a great day.